All right, for an extra uh, extra bit that we got this week, uh, Rob, you have had something on your on your on your mind that you've wanted to get off your chest. Yes, and and Matt, I got to get it off my chest. Okay, uh, it, it it's really been bugging me. It's yep. been building up. Yep. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. It's a trend that's been happening the last year. Uh, it started with our beloved Steven Spielberg, yes, who kind of started the pile on and made it safe for guys like Roland Emmerich to jump on. Mm -hmm. And now today, one of my favorite action movie directors of all time, and yeah. probably one of yours, yeah, and, and directed some classics, uh, John McTiernan, the yep. director of the original Die Hard, and Die Hard 3, actually, and mm -hmm. also uh, Predator, Predator, which was yeah. an amazing film, which we should like point out was six commandos being hunted yes. in a jungle by a barbaric, you know, predator. Alien, a alien predator. Yeah. And, uh, and shows Carl... I don't know what Carl his Weathers. name was. Carl Weathers yeah. and Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> who they admit were trying to out-masculine each yes. other and out-buff each other during the filming. Well, our good friend John McTiernan, my buddy, <laughs> not not sure, I've never met him. Um, but uh, the thing is that he, can't, he went on record today uh, in the Premier, Premier Magazine, yep. published in France, and of course it was beamed up to the internet immediately. He talked about how he's, uh, he is disliking major studios and he cannot watch the majority of major studios anymore. Okay. And he says, Captain America, comma, I'm not joking here. The cult of American hypermasculinity is one of the worst things to have happened to the world in the last 50 years. Hundreds of thousands of people have died because of this idiotic delusion. Wait, pause. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger has his shirt off. Most of Predator. Um, I don't know what a celebration of masculinity Predator is, I just know it, it is a celebration yeah. of masculinity, John, and Die Hard is the ultimate yeah. celebration of one man versus everybody. Totally. D Bruce Willis versus everyone in the building. Um, <laughs> but it's like, the, it's like these guys are now like, they're coming out and they love to throw comic book, he, he goes on to bash comic book movies and say, all the studios are making their comic book adaptations. They're just action, not human beings. These are films made by fascists. Really, John? <laughs> really? By fascists? Um, look, John, maybe you need to do what I do and Google that word and, and, and study because it doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> and uh, John, I saw the 13th warrior, Antonio Banderas, Vikings, whatever the bad creatures were, zombies. I, I, I just remember going, these creepy cave dwellers, and I was the only dude in that theater that Friday on opening weekend. And, and John, you should be nicer to comic book movies. Here's the thing, he, I mean, first he's a hypocrite, yep. which bugs me. Um, and, and in my industry, 30 years in comic books, I'm always interested in what the young guys are doing. Sure. Some young guys get plum assignments. They move the old guys out of the way. Yeah. And it's fun to watch what they do. And, and my whole thing is, are you gonna learn from this? Are you gonna learn from these young guys? Because they're bringing in a different bag of tricks. And I believe the way you stay young is applying the lessons from the younger generation. And I've seen great filmmakers yeah. who have you can see they walked out and they applied this and they applied that and maybe they watched a Tarantino film and maybe they watched a Cameron yeah. film. And again, guys like Tim Miller, who directed Deadpool and the Russo Brothers, yep. Civil War yep. and, and Winter Soldiers, these guys I'm sure were McTiernan fans and are doing McTiernan-like things, yes. but he's not anymore, which right. makes me think, Johnny, did we not get a job? Did we get passed up for Captain America 4? <laughs> um, I mean, wh wh it was, was Batman not an option? I, it's just like, knock it off. Like, stop crapping on what we like. Um, that's what I, I hate it. Well, I hate it. And, it's and like, you it's said, jealousy. You said something that our first episode that actually struck me a little bit. You said that your kids don't want to see Bruce Willis in a bit. That's just, it's not it anymore. Now that yes! But what that did, what I, because I'd always thought, oh, action movies and then superhero movies. This is the, this is the action movie of today. This is the extension of that. That became this. Matt, what you are referencing is when I, and I'll, it's worth revisiting. I was at Paramount Studios. They were going to buy Youngblood. Right. The president of Paramount, uh, Mr. Goldwyn, said to me that he believed that the bell curve in in 2003 it was already showing signs that superheroes were going to close up shop. It was a trend. It was right. going to be over. And and I just laughed at him. He had his grease board, he had his charts, he, because he did not want to make a mistake. The studio presidents, you have too many flops, you get shown the door. Right. So he's like, I'm trying to avoid. Uh, the best thing about Hollywood, my buddy, Jeff Loeb, I will give him his name, he said, Rob, 
The way to survive in Hollywood is to do nothing. If you do nothing, then you did nothing wrong, and you did nothing <laughs> to get fired from. So that's why they keep things in development hell. Oh, if I make that, that may not work. Oh, okay, let's get another script on this. I'm not making it. Let's. And, and I was like, he's right. And I have buddies who are executives for yeah. five years who made two movies. And then my one buddy finally made a movie, and he got fired. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, And you're like, you know, it's true. But they try not to do – but what I said to him that day, what, what, what you're referencing is I said – Buddy, you're wrong. We've already seen a guy shoot web shooters, and we've had somebody flame on. Yeah. And we have guys who have claws coming out of their hands. Yep. I just did the Hugh Jackman. I'm so excited. I saw <laughs> claws come out of my hands. And, and, and the thing is, the thing is I that, that I said to him, you can't go back to right. Bruce Willis in a building right. with a gun and bare feet and, and go, can he get across that glass without cutting himself? We did that. Yeah. And, and guys pulling guns on each other, now it's gonna be like, I can wave my magic powers at you. Yeah. And okay, let's say Doctor Strange. Yeah. Doctor Strange uh, is going to open up an entire new world for Marvel, like I've told you. Yeah. You're yeah. gonna take Harry Potter and you're gonna smash him into Marvel Comics. And Doctor Strange, predates Harry Potter by like 40 years. So do not come out of that movie, millennials, going, oh, they totally like ripped off Harry Potter. <laughs> no, <laughs> reverse that. JK, whatever her name is, Rowling's <laughs> loves Stan Lee. Let's just go there. Um, oh, and, and dude, honestly, my wife, we saw Mrs. Peregrine's uh, Crazy Children trailer. It's like, and she goes, does that look like Harry Potter? I go, you mean the X-Mansion that all the kids with the mutant powers live in, in this trailer? That's the X-Men. So I got to correct my <laughs> wife too. When you see it, Mrs. Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Yes. Also known as the X-Men. Yeah. Um, so John McTurnan. And <laughs> when I was 20, they would say, check it, check yourself before you wreck yourself, John. <laughs> so knock it off. Go make another Die Hard. I'm sorry that you got turned down for Captain America. Five. <laughs> and there it is. And there it is. I feel better. Okay, good. Okay, good, good.